Okay, folks. This investigation, this experiment, students tend to find a little bit more difficult than some of the others. It is a little bit more challenging, especially when you're plotting the graph. But there's a lot of overlap with some other experiments, especially in the precautions. And once you put work into it, you will find it quite manageable, I have no doubt. Now, this investigation, this experiment, is to investigate the relationship between the period and the length for something known as a simple pendulum. And by doing that and plotting a graph, calculating g, the acceleration due to gravity. Now, looking at that description there, there's a few words I think we need to be clear on. Period, length, simple pendulum, and acceleration due to gravity. I think we need to be crystal clear on what we mean by these. This um, experiment, of course, has come up twice in the last uh, seven or eight years in the Leaving Cert, 2012, 2017. Doesn't mean it can't come up in 2020. It used to be very common on the Leaving Cert, not as common these days. Okay, well, let's look at those four things I underlined. Acceleration due to gravity, G. Well, we should be well familiar with what this is. The acceleration due to gravity is the rate at which an object in free fall, falling on its own in a gravitational field close to the Earth's surface, the rate at which it gains speed, or as I said before, the rate it gains velocity because we know the direction it's going in. Now, g is often uh, written as 9.8 meters per second per second. That simply means that an object falling in gravi under gravity gets 9.8 meters per second faster every second that it's falling. So that's the rate of increase in velocity. And it's normally written g equals 9.8 meters per second to the minus 2. That's the more modern way of writing it. Okay, what else? Well, what is a simple pendulum? Well, a simple pendulum is a very, very simple device. All a simple pendulum is, is a weight, usually a lead sphere, at the end of a string attached to some point of support, secure point of support, which you can swing from. So this is a fixed point of support. This here is just a length of string. And this here is the lead weight which is known as a, a bob, a pendulum bob. We'll just say lead there, so we understand what it's made of. And all you do is you displace the lead bob a little bit to one side, and as you can see over here in the diagram, it swings back and forward. So it swings up to there and over the other side and keeps repeating that periodic motion like that. That is known as a simple pendulum. Now, what do we need to know about a simple pendulum? Well, the period. Well, the period is very, very simple. The period is the time it takes to go from one place and complete one full swing till it comes back to where it started. So the period is the time taken for one full swing, usually measured from the highest point on one side over to the highest point on the other and back to where it started. That is the period, and the symbol for period is capital T, not small t, capital T. The period is the time taken for one full swing or one full oscillation of the pendulum. That's a definition you need to know. Now there is a formula for, uh, there's a formula for the period of a pendulum, and that formula says this. It says the time taken for one full swing or the period equals 2 pi multiplied by the square root of L, the length of the pendulum, divided by the acceleration due to gravity. That formula, we we'll just label it, T is the, the period or the time for one full swing, L is the length of the pendulum, and G is our old friend, the acceleration due to gravity. Now, that formula allows you to calculate the period of a simple pendulum, 
t equals 2 pi root l over g. Uh, both l and g are under the square root sign there, just to be careful of that. That is on page 54 of your maths tables. Everyone is um, supposed to have their maths tables, and if you don't have them, you're really going nowhere. You need to get them. That formula is in the, in the maths tables, but if you juggle that formula around, if you manipulate it a little bit, you end up with this formula. Now, this formula, for the purpose of this experiment, is a much more useful formula. This is saying g, the acceleration due to gravity, and remember the purpose of this experiment is to actually calculate, measure the acceleration due to gravity, equals 4 pi squared l over t squared. Let's just be careful and label this again. This is the length of the simple pendulum. t is the period or the time for one full swing. 4 pi squared is a constant. It turns out to be around 39.2, 39.3. And if you look here, g is the, our old friend, acceleration due to gravity. And this version of the formula, I would strongly su suggest that you actually pause this little video now and you learn that version of the formula. Because even though the first version is in the maths tables, the second version, which is much, much more useful, is not, and I think students need to learn it. So we've looked at period, we've looked at what is a simple pendulum, we've looked at what is acceleration due to gravity. The fourth thing that I mentioned earlier was the length. And you say, well, length is quite easy, just measure that with a meter stick. But let's have a little quick chat about the length of a simple pendulum. Here is our simple pendulum, and you say that's very simple. The length is from there to there, but let's be careful. There's actually two components to this length. Just draw a dotted line across there from the top of the pendulum bob, and we go from the fixed support up there down to the top of the pendulum bob, and we'll call that distance x. Now, x can be measured with a meter stick. And then let's just talk about this distance here. Now that distance there is the diameter of the lead ball. And what instrument could you use to measure the diameter of a lead ball? Well, if you're measuring diameter of a lead ball, you could use a digital vernier calipers. So that distance there, which I'm gonna call D, okay, is the diameter of the lead ball, and that can be measured using a a digital vernier calipers. So X has to be measured using a meter stick. Always good to get a meter stick somehow into the experiment because there's a set of precautions with that that we uh, know and understand very well. And D here is measured with a digital vernier calipers. People who do metal work tend to know instinctively how to use that a piece of equipment. Now, what do we do? How do we get the length? Well, the length of the simple pendulum then turns out to be distance x, which is measured with the meter stick, plus <coughs> half the diameter, diameter over 2. Because we always, in this experiment, measure the distance to the center of mass, the center of gravity of the ball. In other experiments, it was to the bottom of the ball. In this one, it is to the center of gravity, the center of the mass. Sometimes you're going to see me write this formula as x, or length equals, you're going to see me write this formula as a length equals x plus r, which is the radius, because half the diameter, obviously, is the radius. How did we get x? That length, we got it with a meter stick. How do we get that length there? We used the digital vernier calipers, half it, that's the radius. So the full length of the pendulum is the length of the string plus the radius of the lead ball, and you have to use that formula to calculate it. That's gonna become significant later. Okay, we've got rid of four little points there, so we're now gonna move on with this investigation. We're gonna move on to see what the experiment is actually like. Okay. Experiment to measure acceleration due to gravity using the simple pendulum method. Well, the first thing, like we always do with these experiments, we look at a diagram. And here in this diagram, we have our simple pendulum. Here we have our string. Here we have our pendulum, Bob. And here we have our fixed point of support. 
And usually in this experiment, because you want a very fixed point there from where to measure the length of the pendulum from, what is often used is a piece of cork, like a cork of a bottle, split in two, and the, the string is actually going through the split cork and clamped there together. So our fixed point of support is a split cork. Um, usually, this whole thing is connected to a, a retard stand of some sort. So we might as well draw that in there, even though I'm not really drawing it too well. But the most important points, the most important points is to get the split cork, because that gives you a fixed point of support from where to measure the length, the string, and the pendulum bob. Also, it is an incredibly good idea to make it very clear what length we are talking about. Well, as I said earlier, we're talking about the length. The length is from the base of the split cork to the center of gravity of the pendulum bob. And the length is formed from two parts. We've got X, which is the length of the string, plus that part there, which is the, um, the radius of the pendulum bob. And we just write down there underneath it, so we'll remember length equals x plus diameter divided by two. <coughs> Let's not lose sight of our experiment. It is to measure the acceleration due to gravity. And we looked at the formula in the previous page of g, the acceleration due to gravity is 4 pi squared length over periodic time squared. Because at the end of the day, we're going to calculate acceleration due to gravity using this formula. g, acceleration due to gravity, 4 pi squared, constant. L is the length of the pendulum from the base of the split cork to the center of gravity of the bob. And t is the periodic time, the time taken for one swing squared. So. In this experiment, we also will have to measure, obviously, the time. So it's a good idea to just put in there a little box and call this electronic timer. And label it like that. Um, it would also be a good idea to just mention that the instrument we're using to measure X is a meter stick, and that is a digital vernier calipers. So we might just say, That measures the radius and that measures there. Remember the length of the pendulum is the length of the string measured with a meter stick and the radius or half the diameter measured with the digital vernier calipers. <coughs> okay, what do we have to actually measure? Well, clearly if we want to calculate acceleration due to gravity, we have to calculate the length of the pendulum and the time for one swing. Remember, the time for one swing would be a very, very small number. One swing of a pendulum would only be maybe a second, second and a half. And when you're dealing with small values, small numbers, you tend to get high percentage errors. So there's a way around that. Okay, let's look at the method here, the method for this experiment. Well, first of all, you measure the length x. We've shown it in the diagram. Always show your distances, your lengths on the diagram with a meter stick. And we measure the length r which is the radius of the bob with the digital vernier calipers. Or you could say measure diameter and divide by two. <coughs> that, of course, is the radius. What do we do then? Well, we say the length of the simple pendulum is the length of the string plus the radius of the pendulum bob, the length from the bottom of the split cork to the center of mass of the pendulum bob. That gives us the length of the pendulum. What about the time, the, the period, the time for one full swing? Well, the way to do that is to measure the time, calculate the time for 40 swings of the period. 40 swings of the pendulum, apologies. 40 swings of the pendulum. And if you can't do it for 40 swings of the pendulum, get the time, the total time for 40 swings, pull it back. One, two, three, Get the time for 40 swings and then divide by 40, you will get the period. 
and you say why not just do it for one swing and get it out of the way well the number would be very very small you have human reaction time starting the electronic timer you have human reaction time stopping the electronic timer and that would add significantly to your errors so you measure the time for 40 swings divide by 40 to get the period of course we're calling the period capital t and that will that will uh lower this lowers this reduces the percentage errors because we're using larger numbers okay so measuring time for 40 swings and dividing by 40 will get the period and also reduce your percentage errors Obviously, if you measured it, uh, did, did this for 50 swings or 60 swings, you'll even reduce your errors further. But there's a limit to how much patience you actually have. Okay, you wouldn't do this for just one length of the pendulum. You would repeat this for five different lengths of the pendulum and find the period for each length of the pendulum. So your results will be length of pendulums in meters and the period in seconds. And you'll have... Maybe one, two, three, four, five, six or seven values of length against period. And what will you do? What do you think you should do with those values, length and period, in order to calculate the acceleration due to gravity? Well, clearly, you're going to have to use the formula. Let's remember the formula. The formula is G equals 4 pi squared L over T squared. I taught you to memorize and learn that formula. Okay. So we're going to have to use that formula. We'll have the L's measured with the meter stake and digital varic calibers. We'll have the period measured with the electronic timer doing 40 swings, dividing by 40 to get an av a period for each length. And we'll have a whole set of values of lengths and times for one swing periods. What do we do then? Well, you could just throw them into the formula and calculate G. But uh, in honors leaving search, you would be expected to plot a graph. Now, you notice here, again, I've written down the formula. I keep saying, please learn that formula. It is not in that form in the maths tables. It's in a different form in the maths tables. So if we want to calculate G by using a graph, we will have to have the slope of the graph something like that. So let's just look here. Well, what should we put on the y-axis? Well, what's above the line of the graph? L, so we'll put that on the y-axis. What's below the graph? T squared, we'll put that on the x-axis. Let's plot the graph, let's talk about the graph. Well, L, that's the length of the pendulum there. And here is T squared, the period squared. <coughs> Obviously, you have to put units. Length is measured in meters. Time capital T would be measured in seconds, so times squared is measured in seconds squared. And when you plot that graph, you will get a set of values like that, that will be in a perfect world, an exact perfect straight line. In the leaving cert questions, might be a tiny bit off, so you try to give the line of best fit, go through, definitely go through not not, and try to go through as many other points as possible. But if you do leave points out, try to leave equal numbers out on either side. That will, of course, tell us, and it's not that relevant in this question, that the length of a simple pendulum is directly proportional to the period squared. Just put that up there. How do we know that? Because it's a straight line graph through the origin. Um... But how are we going to calculate G? Well, what will the slope of this graph be? The slope of this graph will clearly be what's on the y-axis over what's on the x-axis, or an average of what's on the y-axis over an average of what's on the x-axis. What's on the y-axis of this graph? The length of the pendulum. What's on the x-axis of this graph? The period of the pendulum squared, t squared. Now, the slope brings us very close to acceleration due to gravity. But acceleration due to gravity is 4 pi squared L over T squared. And the slope of our graph when we calculate it, of course we'll have to calculate it using the formula slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We have to take two points, call that x1, y1. Call another point more than halfway up the graph and make definitely sure it's on your line. Call that x2 and y2. Get those two values, that'll be naught naught. They're nice, easy points to use. That up there could be a point like 
one four. And we would put those values, x1 naught, y1 naught, x2 1, y2 4, put them into that formula, we'll get the slope. But the slope is not g, because what do you have to multiply? The slope will be l over t squared. That there will be the slope of the graph. But what would you have to multiply that by to get g? Well, 4 pi squared. So we would have to just note that g, the acceleration due to gravity, and the purpose of this experiment is to measure it, would be the slope of the graph, which is obviously L over t squared, but you'll have to multiply that by 4 pi squared. So you get the slope of the graph using the traditional method, multiply it by 4 pi squared, and that will be the acceleration due to gravity. G should be around 9.8, 9.81. Because it's a tough enough graph to do, they give a good bit of leniency in the leaving cert in this kind of question. So when I ask you to do a question on this, you will get a load of L's, lengths of pendulum, a load of periods. You do nothing with the length, but make sure it's in meters. You will have to square the period and then plot L against T squared, draw the line, get the slope of it, do all that working out on the graph, put down the formula, put down that formula, put all your points down on the graph so the corrector knows what you're doing, work out the slope, multiply it by four points pi squared, and you will get, you will get around 9.8, hopefully. Okay. Now, as with all experiments, there are some precautions to make the final result a lot more accurate. So we're going to have a quick look at some precautions to make the final result a little bit more accurate. Here we are, precautions to make final result more accurate. Okay, these are very traditional. You really are probably sick of some of these ones at this stage. Avoid error of parallax when using a meter stick. How do you do that? By looking straight down on the scale of the meter stick. Make sure there's no zero error on the meter stick. How do you do that? By using a new meter stick. As we said today, measure the length from the bottom of the split cork to the center of mass of the bob. Important one there. It will be more accurate to use 50 swings, 50 oscillations instead of 40. Why? This will lead to lower percentage errors in the value of the periodic time. Don't use very short lengths. If you use short lengths, the times will be quite small and this will lead to larger percentages. A general rule is for larger, the larger the number you're using, the lower the percentage. The smaller the numbers you're using, the higher the percentages. So we in science in experiments try to use large numbers in order to reduce percentages. One that um, I just thought of last minute, the electronic timer. Some electronic timers only go to two places of decimal. They're known as centisecond timers. Some electronic timers go to three places of decimal. They're known as millisecond timers. Obviously, the more places of decimal your timer goes to, the more sensitive it is and the more accurate your final result will be. So use an electronic timer that is more sensitive, that measures to more places of decimal. Uh, very important. Let's look at this formula again. G equals 4 pi squared L over T squared. That formula is when it's derived, and you don't have to know how to derive it, it's not on your course. That derivation is based on an assumption that the angle is very, very small. So make sure, keep the angle small, or the, mo or the formula will not work. This formula only works for small angles. And we usually say less than 10 degrees. If you use an angle bigger than 10 degrees, that formula just collapses. Another way of saying that is keep the angle small or the motion will not be simple harmonic, but that's an easier way to, that's an easier way to, to work on it here. Keep the angle small so the formula, because it don't, the formula only works for small angles. Another thing that's often asked in this kind of question, give ways of reducing air resistance because quite clearly the pendulum um, the pendulum is, um, its swing can be reduced by air resistance. It's prone to air resistance. Well, one way is use a dense, small, spherical bob. Usually a lead bob. Uh, it's spherical, so it's got less air resistance. I think spherical is the most important word there. 
And another easy way of doing this would be do the experiment in a vacuum. And yes, this experiment has been done in a vacuum, although that's not a very easy way to do it. Um, it can be done, and that, of course, reduces air resistance to, to zero. Okay, again, if you're asked for one way of reducing air resistance, try to give both. Precautions, you should stop the video now and learn the ones that you have not come across before. And the final thing we're going to look at today, the final thing, and this is kind of a long little experiment. Question 1, 2017. Now I'm going to, at some stage, ask you to do this. And yes, I know you have graph paper because I posted it to you. So let's have a quick look at this experiment, this question. Question 1, 2017. In all these questions, they're very boring because they keep asking the same things over and over again, but often they try to, they try to do it in different ways. Let's look at the question. A student investigated the relationship between the period and the length of a simple pendulum. And then they calculated G due to acceleration due to gravity. They measured the length of the pendulum, which was allowed to swing about a fixed point through a small angle. The time for 40 oscillations was measured. Okay. Uh, let's look here at the question. The procedure was uh, repeated for different lengths of the pendulum. The following data. Why did the student use a small angle? Did we talk about why that angle should be small? I think we did. So why did the student use a quite a small angle? Okay, the next one. How did the student make sure? How did the student make sure that the pendulum was suspended from a fixed point? Well, if we go back at our diagram here, how did the student make a fixed point? What did they use there to form the fixed point? Okay. Between which points was the length of the pendulum measured? Well, we said the base of the split cork down to the center of gravity of the bob, but also we've shown that on our diagram, but you just have to put into words there. And here is an interesting one. Which T value is most accurate? Explain your answer. Let's look at the values of T. The, now, look here. The T values are the values for 40 swings. And which would be the most accurate? Well, what did we say about large numbers? Why are large numbers more preferable than smaller numbers? We said something about large numbers. They're more preferable for a certain reason. Some kind of error is reduced. That would be the answers there. Now, the real part of the question. Draw a suitable graph to show the relationship between length, suitable graph, and its period. And remember, that graph is what we looked at there. The graph will be length on that axis and the period squared on that axis. Let's look at our, our results here just to be absolutely sure we know what we're doing. Length, of course, will be in meters. Is length given in meters here? No, it's not. It's given in centimeters. You divide by 100 and you get the length in meters. That is quite easy. The T is the time for one full swing and it's squared. This is not capital T. This is the time for 40 swings. And what do you do? Well, you would have to divide that number by 40 to get the time for one swing. So I'm just going to do that with my calculator. 34.7 divided by 40 equals, and I'm getting 0 0.8675. But that is the that is the period, that's t the period, but what do I have to do to that now to get t squared? I've got to square it. So I have to go 0.8675 and squared button equals, and I'm getting t squared equals 0 0.6528. And you have to do that for each of those. And that's kind of a considerable amount of work. You've got to divide each of those by 40 and then square them. Divide each by 40 to get the period and then square it. And when you look at that, they're appallingly different numbers to actually plot on a graph. So what a lot of you might do, what I would do if I was plotting this graph, I would actually multiply each of those by a thousand and I would call that 652.8. And that's the number I would plot. When I was doing my calculations later, I would remember I had done that. Okay. Use your graph to calculate G, the acceleration of your gravity. Your graph will be a straight line. 
you say g equals 4 pi squared l over t squared you get the slope of that line you multiply it by 4 pi squared and that should be equal to g 9.8 remember if you get some number like 980 and you say that's not 9.8 it might be something to do with the fact that you multiplied by a thousand or some number there and you forgot to divide it back when you were doing your calculations that is a challenging enough question um, I hope this has been some use to you, but there's one thing that I just remembered and I had a little diagram and I don't have it with me now, but they could ask you this. They could ask you this question. Describe how the length of the pendulum was measured. There's our pendulum. How did we get, there's our fixed support. How do we get the length? Well, you would have to say that distance there down to the top of the pendulum bob is X. That distance there is the diameter of the pendulum bob. This was measured with a meter stick. This was measured with a digital vernier calipers. And this diameter was divided by 2 to get the radius. Then you would have to say, clearly, the length of the pendulum equals x plus diameter over 2. Or you can say length equals x plus radius. Okay, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much.